Hello everyone. So today's task, we are going to blank the EGR cooler and the EGR valve. Now, I do believe there's a slight difference between the 2.2 and 2.4 due to the 2.2 having a DPF. So we're going to do it on my 2.4 while it's out because when the engine's in, it's a pig to do. The EGR valve is to lower the emissions of the engine. So it recycles from the exhaust manifold through a cooler, then through a valve, which then goes back into the inlet manifold to lower the NOx, well, lower the emissions of the diesel engine. So they're a prone on most, most modern engines, EGR valves. They get clogged up, they clog inlet manifolds up, they do cause some issues. Now, if you're wanting to get more power out of an engine and faster turbo response, things like that, you will need to blank the EGR. Obviously, it does affect the emissions. How dare you! <laughs> but, yeah, anyway. With me thinking about getting this remapped, part of the remap, well, you need to blank the EGR. Now, some people just blank the valve so obviously the cooler gets full of soot now when I bought the Land Rover <laughs> there was a fault on the EGR so they replaced the cooler and the valve under warranty and in all fairness I reckon it was blanked off when I bought it because the change in drivability was unreal it didn't it didn't respond as fast it really didn't pull as good um, so, yeah, also with, with the EGR valve, it does actually shorten engine life. Um, there's only one reason, reason, there's only one way I can really explain this. Imagine weeing in a cup and then drinking it. I wouldn't want to do that either. This is what an EGR valve is doing to your engine. So, let's blank that off. So we're going to start by blanking the cooler side first. I've already took the coolant pipes off. Uh, I've left that one on because I don't I don't need to touch that one. Because mine's quite new, studs are actually coming out all right. Whether they come out all right on the one that you're thinking about doing, if it's been on a long time, they might be see solid. Oop, nearly. That's what take that out actually. There's no way. No point. We bought a hole there. That's a relief in past there. Hmm. There's supposed to be a bolt in there. They didn't fit that very well, did they? I'm going to leave my gasket on because the gasket is designed to seal when it's crushed together. So put the gasket on the manifold side and the plank obviously behind the gasket and then pull the cooler on from there. So just put the stud in there. Snap that through the stud, put the plank on. Says. That's one going in. Second one. Ooh, we're tight. Oh, we're moving out. There we go. That's the second one going in. So 
nip the studs. Only nip them, they don't need to be tight. Because your 13mm nuts does all the work. Nuts, rather. just to make sure that there's no exhaust gas that goes through. I mean, looking at that, it looks like I put a lot on, but I really didn't. <laughs> Nip them up. Right, that's half the job done. So we've done it at the cooler now. So the only one left to do is actually at the valve. So, and this one's not a bad one because you can actually just sign it off, slot it in, Turn it back up. I won't mind having a quick look at my valve actually. Just to see if there's obviously there's going to be quite a bit of carbon in there. But I'm th more thinking of clogging. Right. It shouldn't be bad because it's probably what a year old, year and a half old, something like that. And every journey I did the engine more or less got to operating temperature so if the torch comes, just don't know. Okay. Oops, a bit fast. When you turn the ignition off on the Land Rovers and Transits, the EGR valve does a cleaning cycle. I'm doing this. And you can usually tell the condition of the valve when it's doing its cleaning cycle at the end of the run. Now, mine sounded like the day I picked it up. Clean off that, that's sparkling, nothing wrong with that. Stick them all down there. Oh, that is bitter. Needs a bit of soap, but it's not extreme. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's it. So, because this one's more of a hook type, so you don't, you didn't actually need to take the valve off. You can just slide it off, put it on, and go from there. But I just wanted to look, see what sort of condition it was in. in there, keep it on the actual valve side, tighten the one up, And that is the EGR valve system completely blanked off. I'll get a bolt for this and it'll miss it. So now you should get quicker engine response, probably better fuel economy. Um, a lot, it's just the general drivability of the engine should run smoother now. You will have to, well, sorry, the engine management light will come on. It's guaranteed that it'll come up with a fault uh, with EGR flow so you will have to either get it turned off with the, the light you can you can get people who say people who remap cars or people with a genuine Land Rover or Ford ET software can actually 
turn it off so the light won't come back on. So just bear that in mind, if you do blank your EGR valve, your engine management light is going to come on and you'll need to get it turned off properly. Not just clear the codes, I mean actually take the EGR valve out of the ECU so it, so it says everything's fine. And that's it really. And a, only a quick quick job that one. Well, for me it was. Uh, it's a different story when it's actually in in your vehicle. So the Land Rovers are a bit of a pain. The Transits, if you've got a front wheel drive Transit, they're not a bad job. If you've got a rear wheel drive Transit, then the engine's obviously mounted the other way. They are a bit of a pain. Um, but, in my opinion, it is worth it. So, so I couldn't help but notice when I fitted the EGR blanks, I had a look into the inlet manifold where the exhaust gas is recirculated. And it's absolutely chock a block full of black soot. Um, so while it's like this, I'm just going to take it off and give it a quick clean. Really thick inside. I'll show you in a minute. Just take the inlet off first. That's years of crap. They obviously didn't clean that out when they did the head gasket. So that's just might be something I do. Right, I turn now. that tight. Oh. oh my god. Really? Oh. Oh, not necessary that. Sound actually bad. In there is not actually that bad. It's still filthy. But in there, look at that. Just get that up on camera. That is thick. Really, really thick. And that is caused from the EGR valve recirculating the exhaust gases back into your engine that's why it's always better to blank them off if possible so in my case definitely so it's the same story in the inlet pipe itself so i'll just show you how it works so the valve there so put the torch down there is the egr valve so it takes exhaust gases from the manifold here through a cooler and the valve opens and then that exhaust gas see the silver pipe goes up this one here in here and then goes into your inlet manifold so that is you can see there where the where it comes out so it's really thick, so the best thing to do, now I've blanked them off, is clean them. The inlets are actually bad. So 
So I'll just give everything a quick clean and then put it back together. So I've now given the inlet manifold and the the pipe a really, really good clean out. Uh, I've got as far as I can into the balls, I'm saying balls, into the inlet and the manifold itself. Now that is pretty hard. I mean, you can see there there is bits because it's so restricted to get in. The main buildup of carbon was in the start of the inlet manifold. So I cleaned all that out. So the worst bit was there and the turbo pipe, which I've cleaned out. So that'll allow it to breathe a lot better now. I'm glad I looked at that actually. So if you do blank the EGRs, definitely, definitely have a look at the return pipe or the boost pipe, whatever you want to call it, into the inlet manifold, because that obviously will be clogged up. That was from the EJR return pipe, which then goes directly into the inlet manifold. I mean, you can see the amount of muck there. So you imagine all that is getting recy recycled back into your engine. So I'm gonna refit the inlet manifold now. And I'll clean it all out. I've just wiped inside the uh, inlet towards the valves. Clean them up the best I can. And I'll strip that together now. I'm reusing the inlet manifold seals. Uh, they're not they've not gone hard and then still nice and soft, so there's no reason really to replace them. Don't need to be major tight. It is only plastic. That's all the inlet manifold cleaned out. Now hopefully it should run a little bit better now. 